Did you hear there's a new color of Simon Hurley for Ranger Lunar Paste? Check out this video to see it. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel, and in fact, there's an entire Simon Hurley collaborating with Ranger and Spellbinders release available now. And that includes the new copper color of Lunar Paste, as well as stamps, dyes, and stencils. So let's swatch out that new color of Lunar Paste, check out the new products, and then we'll start card making. This is the new color of Lunar Paste. It's called Refined Copper. Now, what I love about Lunar Paste is that it is super creamy, easy to apply, and creates the most gorgeous metallic colors that you can make on cards. I had not swatched out the gold and silver colors of Lunar Paste yet, so I thought I would do all three metallic colors together so that you could see them. And when I swatch, I like to use a palette knife to swipe some color across, and then underneath that, I like to use a foam blender to blend it on both black and white cardstock so that you can really see a little bit of everything that this color can do and absolutely lunar paste really shows up beautifully on dark colored cardstocks but you can see that especially these metallics look gorgeous on white as well so don't think you can only use dark cardstocks with something like lunar paste they look absolutely beautiful and the refined copper really fits in nicely with these metallics this is a stamp and die set that is called fall sampler these are layering stamps and you can create two-toned images with them. There's also a couple of dies to cut out the images as well as some pumpkin faces that you can use on the pumpkins themselves and I'll show you how I did that later in today's video but these are just fun little faces that you could also use just with the dies. This is the stamp and die set Perfect Cats and all of the cats can be cut out with the coordinating dies as well as some of the smaller images like the butterflies and the little balls of yarn and string that the cats are playing with. And I love having this option of getting dies so that you can cut out these images. They would be hard to fussy cut, honestly. And so just being able to pass them through the die cut machine allows you to then pop them up with foam adhesive and really get some dimension. This is the stamps and dies, the leaf prints, and these look like if you took leaves from outside and printed them with paint, that's exactly what these look like. And it is so much fun to play with these with a multiple of inks to create multiple colored leaves. They're absolutely beautiful, perfect for the fall. And then again, you can cut them out with those dies. This is the six by six stencil flip flop circles. You can use this in a number of different ways, vertically, horizontally, two tones on top of each other and more. Next up is the Peel Apart Background Stamp Wings and Things. The great thing about Peel Apart Background Stamps is that you can actually take out some of the images of the stamp. They are perforated. You can keep them all together or you can peel apart and create a different looking image. This is the Cling Mounted Rubber Stamps Floral Borders. There are four borders and they are absolutely beautiful. Now let's use that new color of Lunar Paste as as well as the new stamps, dies, and stencils to make some cards. I am working on the Waffle Flower 8.5 by 8.5 grip mat on my glass mat, and I've placed an A2 piece of black cardstock down on the grip mat. Then I can take the stencil and place it on top, and it will stay in place, even when I'm using the Simon Hurley scraper and the Lunar Paste and going over back and forth many times. The stencil doesn't move, the cardstock doesn't move, everything stays in place. So you can see it's really nice to apply something like Lunar Paste because it is very smooth and creamy and it's really easy to get a nice even consistency with that scraper from Simon Hurley. So that's one layer. Now you can flip that stencil or move that stencil so that it creates a second layer of circles. And this time I'm using Solar Paste. So Solar Paste has a totally different look to it and the color is more of a hint of color within a iridescent kind of effect and so I thought it'd be fun to see how these two look together and you can see there 
on the black, they look really phenomenal. So you can play around with combining solar paste and lunar paste for different effects. So now I have the fall sampler stamp set and the first layer of each of these is the color that's going to be the main color of the image. The second color is going to color in those little white flowers and leaves. So I'm using Shooting Star to color in my Roar colored pumpkin. And I decided to use Shooting Star as all the second layers on each of these different stamps to give it some type of consistency. So here I have the little ghost and now the little ghost has some flowers that you can fill in as well and I'll use Shooting Star for that too. And then last but not least I have a little bat. There are a couple of other images that are available as well, a gourd and a larger bat. So these are really fun Halloween images but they're also really pretty with those flowers. I'm using the coordinating dies, just holding them in place with some washi tape and then here's the little smile for the pumpkin you can cut that out and then you can just cut out the background dye in a color like black or yellow or orange and layer them on top of each other I grabbed one of the sentiments from the stamp set and stamped it out and then just cut it into a rectangle and here I've cut down the panel to four by five and a quarter so I could mat it on some plain black cardstock and then again like I mentioned with the dies it is nice to have them so you can pop everything up on foam adhesive and it really pops off the back of that fun solar and lunar paste background. For the second lunar paste background I'm using the refined copper once again and I'm doing one of my favorite techniques with lunar paste which is to create metallic cardstock starting with a colorful cardstock base. So I start with something that's at least sort of similar. I don't have anything copper colored but this orange was enough similar that you could easily cover it up with the copper and create a nice background. Now for those leaf print stamps, it is really fun to do multicolor stamping. So you can see here, I am softly blending out the line because I don't want harsh lines on these leaves. And I'm using a variety of green, yellow, orange and red inks. And you can see how I'm swiping with the ink pad in order to get a softer look. I don't want any harsh lines. I don't want anything to look like it was stamped in a different color and at a different line. I want it to all blend into each other. So that's how I can create the look of a really natural looking leaf that is turning colors. And I think for the fall, that is so much fun. So again, just adding colors on top of each other and adding partial inking at the tops or bottoms of these leaves to really create the effect of a leaf turning colors. Now you'll see here when I hold this up, you can see the actual swipes of this ink pad on this stamp. Because it's a nice large image that's a solid image, you can create things like this that look like paint strokes. And then again, on the other one, I'm just using my finger to soften up those lines. But check it out when you do that kind of swiping with your stamp. There's a sentiment stamp from the Fall Sampler stamp set that says Happy Thanksgiving. So I thought that would be perfect for this copper background and these leaves on the foreground. And then I thought that white was just a little too white. So I grabbed some all to new gold spray and I'm just splattering it around by taking out the cap and using that to make splatters in the background. I loved creating those multicolored leaf prints so much that I wanted to use some of the other leaves in the stamp set. I'm doing the same exact thing that I did last time, multicolor stamping, making sure there's no harsh lines. Check those out. Don't they look like actual leaves pressed onto a piece of paper? I grabbed another sentiment from the Fall Sampler stamp set that says grateful for all you do. Once again, it's great having the dies so that I can pop them up because they really steal the show here. And this is such a clean and simple fun card to create. Next up, I'm using one of the floral borders from the Kling Mount rubber stamp set. And I have a piece of craft cardstock in my Mini Misty. Remember that my small grip mat is inside the Mini Misty to hold that cardstock in place without a magnet. And then I can place the border exactly where I want it and stamp it out with some Weeping Willow ink. Now, the great thing about craft cardstock is that pencils show up really nicely on it. So I'm using Prismacolor pencils 
angles. I'm not doing anything real crazy because it's not a large open image, but I do want to just color in a bunch of the elements here. And I'm using a variety of green, blue, pink, yellow, and white and orange inks just to give a little bit of a fall flavor, but add in a couple of extra colors as well. And I love the way that this turns out. It was so simple to do, but it looks kind of cool. I don't know, the way that the pencils really show up on the craft cardstock always makes me happy and I always forget how cool it looks. So there's my floral border there. And I picked a couple of stamps from the Perfect Cats stamp set. I'm picking the ones that are silhouettes. So I have a silhouette of a cat and a silhouette of a yarn ball and then the sentiment as well. For a little bit of embellishment, I am taking a tip from Simon Hurley who used a scoring tool to make dots of lunar paste on a card. And I think that is so brilliant. So I'm just adding little dots of the lunar paste within this design. It doesn't need much because it's so pretty as it is, but I thought a little bit of shine and embellishment inside the design might really help make it even more stand out and it just adds a little touch of something special when this card was so easy to create. Next up, I'll use the Wings and Things Peel Apart stamp. So first I stamped it in yellow ink on a piece of A2 white cardstock. Now I'm peeling off the entire background except for the images that can be separated from the background. And then I'll keep those exactly in place and the cardstock exactly in place so I can stamp those with different colors of Simon Hurley ink so that most of the background is yellow and then you have these pops of color throughout. Now a couple of cats from the Perfect Cats stamp set and I have my blue Siamese here and I'm not doing anything super crazy. I'm just using some Ohuhu markers to color these cuties in and for this cat I wanted the second cat I wanted to be mostly white but with a little bit of gray so I'm just adding gray in some swipes and not coloring it fully in then I'll use the dyes with some washi tape to cut it out and I'll stamp a sentiment right on that background since it's mostly yellow a black sentiment really still stands out cut it down to four by five and a quarter so I can mat it on black cardstock and then I'll pop up those cats which is the nice option of having the dies once again on the bottom because they really need to stand out from that fun busy background. I don't know about you, but for me, it's always a good day when Simon Hurley comes out with a new color of Lunar Paste. I think it is the easiest way to add shine to cards. I'd love to hear if something in this release caught your eye. Let me know down in the comments below. If you want more ideas using Lunar Paste, check out this playlist here. As always, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Lunar Paste and... I was like, just panicked that the little record thing wasn't on, but it is. <laughs>